in spirit and in truth. So uh, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I hope that is also our, uh, what we feel in our hearts when we come to, together to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Okay, so today, uh, this morning, we're going to study in the book of Second uh, Peter. Let's open your Bible in the book of Second Peter. Verse James. Okay, Second Peter chapter three. Let's read the whole chapter. Let's all stand up as we read this responsibly. Second Peter chapter three. Verse, uh, verses 1 to 18. Okay, are you there? Uh, this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I steer, you, steer up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were on the religion of the religion. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the, uh, the heavens were of old, and the earth is standing out of the water and in the water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. We're in dwelleth righteousness. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error, the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness altogether, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you once again for this word, this uh, uh, the word that really encourage, encourages us uh, as we live for you here on earth. I pray, Lord, that you will guide us as we study your word, that the Holy Spirit speak to each every one of us. I pray, Lord, that you will be glorified in our uh, lesson today, in our study. And I pray, Lord, that you give me wisdom as I teach your word and also give a receptive heart to your people. And 
we pray, Lord, that you're going to guide us. And we pray also those our brethren are coming here. Bring them here safe and sound. Forgive us all our sins, Almighty God. For all these things I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you all may be seated. So here in Second uh, Peter, this is the, the last epistle of Peter. Uh, as he, we can see here in verse number 1, he said, This is the second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir you up your pure minds by way of remembrance. By the way, the title of our lesson today is, It's a warning and encouragement in the last days. We all know that in our time, this, uh, we are living in the last days and we don't know when when uh, when the Lord will come but we know that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is sure but we don't know when but uh, the, the that's why the Bible is keep on reminding us telling us encouraging us every difficulty that we encounter every problem that we have uh, you we don't mind them because someday God the Lord Jesus Christ will took us will bring us to heaven to in uh, we'll uh, we'll get us from uh, from the from this earth to to the clouds. So that is our like in uh, Timothy it says this is our blessed hope. When we say hope, it is sure that it will come. Now here Peter is uh, telling us something. He is warning us and also encouraging us about the things that will happen in the last days. And we know we are in the last days. Now in number one here, number one. The certainty of the last days and God's promise. We know that the last days is certain and also the God, God's promises is certain. Now, number one, the certainty of the last day is that scoffers will come in the last days. That's what Second uh, Peter says here in verse 1 and verse 2. He said, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir you, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles, of the Lord and Savior. And the Lord our Savior. So we can see here Peter is reminding us. And also he, he mentioned this, this reminding, uh, reminder in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. It says there here, verse 12 and 13 of Second Peter. But this as natural brute brute uh, beast made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that sh that they understand not and shall utter perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of wait mali ata na second peter 1 i mean i'm sorry second peter 1 uh, 12 yeah wherefore i will not neg negligence to put you always in remembrance that these things Though ye know them and be established in the present truth, yea, I think I meet as long as I am this tabernacle to steer you up by putting you in remembrance. Remember, looking looking back here, that Peter is keep on reminding those uh, Christian and believers that these things will happen in the last days. He said he here he wants to emphasize what they should know in the light of the coming of Jesus and the prophecies surrounding his coming. He keeps on reminding, even during those times when the Lord Jesus Christ ascended from heaven, uh, uh, according to some studies, that when the Lord Jesus Christ uh, go back to heaven, that's the beginning of uh, the last days. And then we are living in the last days. That's why John and all the apostles are warning each every one of us and also Paul, is uh, telling those Christians that we need to be ready because the Lord Jesus Christ will come at any time. But until now, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is still uh, not yet coming. But we can see here later oh, what is the, the reason. Now, the, 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 that is the certain taste of the last day. The scoffers will come in the last days. Now, who is this scoffers? The scoffers. In Jude chapter 1, uh, verse 18, it's also uh, re, uh, the same as the Greek word of the mockers. Jude 1, uh, 18, it says there, How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. So these are the mockers. These are the false teachers. And we know that today we can see 
everywhere, especially in the internet, there are lots of false teachers. There are lots of scoffers who, who, who teaches the false doctrine about the Bible, who's teaching about the wrong doctrine, and then many people are uh, believing on them. That's why he, 1 Peter 3, 3 says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. You know, Christians should not be surprised to find that there are those who scoff at the idea of Jesus coming again. Peter told us that the scoffers will come. We don't need to be surprised that there are people who are telling, He's not coming because, look, He... People are, uh, I remember when uh, during in, in uh, 2000, uh, 1997, there is a picture that, that uh, said that the Lord may come this year because 1993 and then seven years tribulation, 2000, the, the world will end at 2000. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what he said. And then uh, that, because that is only his speculation and be, uh, because of the timeline we are studying the the dispensation and every seven something happens seven thousand years so that's what he said but now is 2020 and then uh, that's why there are many people is telling this message is keep on telling them long time ago but what happened still nothing happened the lord jesus christ didn't come there are false teachers it says uh it says we'll come in the last days when when are the last days? In a sense that the last days bega began when the Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven. Now since that time, we run parallel alongside the edge. It means that we are ready to go anytime at God's good pleasure. This is uh, the last days and we don't know when, when we will the Lord Jesus Christ will come. At any time, maybe today, tomorrow, or the next day. But uh, the things that we need to do is we need to be ready about these things. And then it says, these scoffers are walking according to their own lust. It reminds us that scoffers do not only have an intellectual problem with God and His Word. They also have a clear moral problem, wanting to, to reject the Lordship of Jesus Christ over their lives. You know, the reason why they scoff the Word of God, because they don't want to obey their creator they cannot accept that there is a, 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 a God who created them that they need to submit to them they scoff the Word of God they mock the Word of God they teach uh, uh, about uh, false doctrine because of their own lust they cannot accept even the, those who be, those uh, uh, atheists you know they they really don't believe that there is God it's not because uh, they cannot prove it. It's because of their own lust. They cannot uh, accept that they will submit to somebody that they didn't see, they don't know. So that's what they, uh, they believe. they walking according to their own lust. So the, so the, that the scoffers will come in the last days, and we saw the scoffers. And then let's look at the message of the scoffers. What is their message? In Second Peter 3, 4, it says here, and saying, there is the promise of his coming. For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. The message of scoffers is clear. They said, where is the promise of his coming? No Christian have talked about Jesus coming for 2,000 years when, the Lord, uh, when Jesus Christ ascended from heaven. The apostles, all the apostles are warning and telling those Christians that we need to be ready because the Lord Jesus Christ will come at any time and he still hasn't come back yet so we can see that their message is clear where is the promise of his coming they said all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation the scoffers based their message on the idea that things have always been the way they are right now and that God has not and will not do anything new in his plan of creation they insisting that the Lord, that, that God's promise is not true they teaching and uh, telling that these things will not happen uh, it's not uh, it will not happen because uh, that's what the scoffers do that's the message of the scoffers I don't know if you if you encounter a Christian the when you are talking they said 
they telling that the Lord Jesus Christ will come but until now where is his coming why he why still uh, not coming you know if you have an idea like that that is the message of scoffers because that's not uh, it's against the Word of God that's why uh, here we need to have faith we need to be uh, to rely on the Word of God that we know that when God promised he will do it even though uh, like, like we, Peter also mentioned here about the time frame that's why we are so uh, Mainipin. Ano yung mainipin? My nips. Hindi <laughs> English. So, we are, uh, yeah, mainipin. Because, uh, because of the time frame we can see here later. So, that's the message of the scoffers. And then, uh, verse 5 and verse 7, we can see here the, the errors of scoffers. In Second Peter 3, 5 and 7, it says here, For this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water verse 6 whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished and but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto the fire against the day of judgment and perdition of the ungodly now we can see here the errors of the scoffers they said for this they are willingly are ignorant of the scoffers presume upon the mercy and long suffering of God insisting that because they have never seen a widespread judgment of God that there will never be one they think that it will not happen because what they are uh, experiencing right now there's no uh, worldwide judgment although there we experience this uh, pandemic the covid it is a taste of uh, something will happen worse than that so imagine it's only a simple uh, we can say not uh, a little bit uh, not uh, worse compared to the the things that is written in 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 revelation so that's their uh, errors they willfully forget god's creation and the judgment god poured out on the earth in the days of noah you know the a literal belief in creation in adam and eve and in noah's flood are essential for the true understanding of god's working both then and now we need to remember we need to understand we need to have faith that the creation in genesis is literally uh it is literal and the flood it's literal it happens and that's what they uh they refuse to believe they said it's just like a fable do you know uh, if you search about most all the civil civilization during old days they have this story about a flood the that that's the proof that there there are really uh, were really flood that occurred during those time and uh like in china asian china they have a story about the flood there are eight people same with the noah but they have different character and also the the mayan they also have their story about the flood and the other civilization you you can see that and you can uh, study about that but these people they don't believe that this is not literal it, it doesn't happen to deny these things undermines the the, fer the very foundation of our faith so if we deny all these things it will affect our faith because this is the uh, foundation of our faith those things that written in the word of god sadly today it is many christians who willfully forget these things putting themselves in the place of scoffers sometimes we are unaware we are telling the message of these scoffers especially those who we are teachers all of us are teaching science and we can see in our textbook and when we come to a topic about evolution and we i don't know how you relate that to your student but evolution we know it is not true they said evolution is science but evolution is not science evolution is just a belief it's just like a religion because we know if we the uh, the meaning of science science is a systematic knowledge based on facts right upon observation and experimentation they need to uh, observe and do something in order to prove 
the, the things that they believe and based on facts. But this evolution is not, is not a fact. That is a, just like a fairy tale. When you read the, about dinosaurs, right? like what I mentioned before, when you read about dinosaurs, the first sentence that you can read, million of years ago, you see. Always like that, million of years ago. And then that's really, I don't know how they come up, why many people, and those children who heard that, 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 that uh, lesson will, uh, will, uh, will adopt those beliefs. And Satan is using that in order for them to believe that there is a God who created that the, the, the earth is, uh, uh, started when God created, when God said by the word of God. They said evolution we started from a small dot. How come a small dot and then it, because of energy, it's exploded and keep on growing and become like this. And <laughs> you see, we, our ancestor is a uh, dot. So that's what they telling. You know, it's against the the law of uh, thermodynamics. You know, from order to disorder, the law of entropy. You know, we, we know that everything will be will become disorder from order to disorder. But evolution from disorder to order. So it's against the law of science, and uh, also in the law of energy, you cannot create energy. You cannot destroy energy because energy is there. And you cannot create matter and you cannot destroy matter. Matter is already there. But they said that it's keep on evolving. No, that's not true. So that's why we need to be careful on what we are teaching our student. I don't know uh, uh, in other countries, even in the Philippines, our, the textbook that we are using is really funded by our government. That all of those are, most of them... Uh, about lies teaching those children and this is our burden that we need to to teach the right thing uh, about the the word of God the truth from the word of God and then they said that by the word of God the heavens were of old the Bible clearly teaches that the active agent in creation was God's word it was the word of God that's why these things were here we he spoke and creation come into being it, it, it doesn't start from uh, something uh, small and uh, they believe I, I don't know if you heard the Big Bang you know Big Bang really it have it will it is true and Peter said there's a loud noise that will happen and everything will be destroyed so that's the real Big Bang the Big Bang that they are saying is not true and then he said whereby the world then that then was being overflowed with water perish Peter's point is that things on this earth have not always continued the way they are now. So because of that law, from uh, order to disorder, the earth was different when God first created it, when it was different again after the flood. And we know during the creation when uh, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the, their environment is perfect. They said that the, the, the animals grow bigger, they are uh, they don't need uh remember there's no rain no need to water the plants only the the dew from uh uh from the atmosphere and the, our our atmosphere is perfect but after that after the flood it changed because because of sin and everything changed but they don't believe about that therefore no one should scoff up at god's promise that he will make it different again judging it now with water but someday he will just judge it with fire so it says here but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men the same word that created all matter when god said and judge the world in the flood will one day bring the judgment on fire upon the earth so everything here will be dissolved and uh, that's what they cannot believe that's the errors of the scoffers and then next let's look at the truths that scoffers deny but God's people cling to what are the things that scoffers deny but we are keep on holding to in 2nd Peter 3 8 to 10 says here but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing 
that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us ward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Here, this is the real Big Bang. The heavens in the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, also, <laughs> sobrang papaganda. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. You know what seems like forever for us is but a short time for God. It doesn't mean uh, it is not like uh, an equation that we that. One day for God is a thousand years. It doesn't mean like that. It says that our time compared to God is different. Because God is not bounded by time. If God is bounded by time, He is not God. We are only bounded by time, by space and matter, and God is outside in that uh, sphere. So, so God, uh, the time for God is different for us. Just an hour may seem an eternity for a child, but a moment for an adult. Remember, a child, when you promise, I will come back, and then they, they think that one hour is so long, but for us, it's just like a moment, something like that. Now, Peter is not giving some prophetic formula, saying that a prophetic day somehow equals a thousand years. He is communicating a general principle regarding how we see time and how God sees time. When people use this verse in a rigid prophetic key, it opens the door for great error. That's why if we are studying the Bible, the timeline, and we, we rely on this statement that one day is a thousand years, we will be in great error. Peter quotes it, this idea in Psalm 90 verse 4. Psalm 90 verse uh, 4. For a thousand years in thy sight are but us yesterday. When it is past, and as a watch in the night. So Peter uh, got his idea also from the Word of God. So we cannot say that a thousand years is one day to God. So that is just uh, telling us the, the time frame. That, that's why we need to, to wait. We need to, to, to be patient in waiting for something that we are, we are asking for the Lord. That's why here the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. The truth is that God will keep His promise and without delay, according to his timing. Any perceived delay from our perspective is due to the long-suffering of God. We are thinking that God delays something. No, it's not. A, we think that it's just like a perceived delay, but it's not a delay. God has a perfect time according to his, uh, uh, to his timeline. So, the reason why, because of long-suffering of God, who allows many as much time as possible to repent the reason why the lord jesus christ will not didn't come back yet because god is long suffering are you uh, are you not glad that god did, uh, jesus christ didn't come 10 years ago 20 years ago uh, if the lord jesus christ came 30 years ago maybe i'm not saved okay maybe all of us here so if the lord jesus christ that, that i'm thinking about that when the if the lord jesus christ came that year maybe i'm not here i or I will be in hell. But we need to praise the Lord. Thank God that He is he, he, he still, He's not delaying. But He has a perfect time during his, uh, when He will come. So that is the long suffering of God. Because He said that not willing, He is not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. The plan of God is not every, all creature will go to heaven. But his plan is those who will repent. And he, wants, uh, he doesn't want anybody to go to hell. That's why he, he made a remedy. Those who will repent, who will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, will, uh, will be with the Lord. Now, Peter reveals some of God's glorious heart. The reason why Jesus' return isn't sooner is so that all should come to repentance. That's the purpose of God, that all should come to repentance. 
because God is not willing that any should perish. We understand that God is not willing that any should perish, not in the sense of the divine decree, as if God has declared that no sinners will perish. Rather, Peter's statement reflects God's heart of love for the world in John 3.16. He loved the world so much. And his compassionate sorrow even in the righteous judgment of the wicked. Now, it is the same thought as expressed in Ezekiel 33, 11. It says, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. So, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, he said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He doesn't want anybody to perish. You know, God is uh, really uh, sad with that. But, uh, he said, but that the wicked turn from his way and leave. Now he says here, and let's continue. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Though the Lord's suffering, the Lord's long suffering love to the lost makes it seem that perhaps he delays his coming. The truth is that he will indeed come. So sure, it is uh, certain that the Lord Jesus Christ will come. And when Jesus does return, he will come at a time that will surprise many. We know that as a thief in the night. The ultimate result of his coming will be a total transformation of this present world in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. So everything will be changed, will be destroyed. And what they, is, they believe that how come uh, he will burn everything? You know, if you study the atoms in the nuclear, uh, uh, the structure of atom, when they split, they produce energy. So, God created that and God can destroy that. Okay, that's number, uh, number one, the certainty of the last days and God's promise. Now, let's go to number two. We are number two, living in light of the last days and God's promise. In Second Peter 11, Peter 11 uh, 13, uh, number one, holy and godly living in anticipation of a new created order. We need to live a holy and godly life. It says here, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt in fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. So it says here, say, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in light of the fact that this world order and the things associated with it will be dissolved, we should live our lives seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in Matthew 6.33, having a holy conduct and godliness. We, we are sure that these things will, uh, will happen, but while we are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to live holy. We need to be godly while waiting for the coming of God. A man is foolish to invest everything in things that he cannot keep when he can invest in things that he cannot lose, things that are eternal. So many verses in the Bible keep on reminding us that we need to focus on eyes, our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to think of the things that is eternal. Don't waste our time for these uh, this, uh, worldly things. Sometimes we, we, we work so hard for us to, be, uh, to become rich. We put all our time in order to, become, uh, your comfort, to have a comfortable life. But the Bible is telling us, uh, don't use all your time in those things. We need to use our time for the Lord Jesus Christ. But uh, it doesn't mean that don't work. Because God is also telling us that we need to work. So, the Bible is clear here that our priority is God. Because if God is our priority, everything will put in order. Everything will be in order. And it says here, Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. Peter says that there is a sense in which we can hasten the Lord's coming. It's remarkable to think that we can actually do things that will help Jesus returned sooner. In the immediate context, Peter says that we hasten the Lord's coming by our holy conduct and 
godliness. Now, we can also hasten the Lord's coming through evangelism. Paul says that God's prophetic focus on Israel will resume when the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, in Romans 11.25. And we can also hasten the Lord's coming through prayer. Remember the prayer, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So, it says, even as Daniel asked for a speedy fulfillment of prophecy regarding captive Israel in Daniel chapter 9, we can also pray, even so come, Lord Jesus. So, that's what the Bible is telling. Now, number two, we need to keep diligent and do not despise the long suffering of God. Verse 14 and verse 15. Wherefore, beloved, be seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So, if our hearts are really set on the glory for a new heaven and a new earth, we will endeavor to walk godly in regard to our brothers and sisters in peace and regard to God without spot and blameless. That's what we need to do. We need to walk godly in every details of our life. We need to glorify God in everything that we do. The Bible says, whether therefore eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it for the glory of God. And then said, the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. It is easy for Christians to sometimes resent the long suffering of God. After all, it delays His coming, yet the long suffering of our Lord is salvation for others. And its salvation is also for us. And here also we can note here about the letter of Paul. He says, Peter said, even as our beloved brother Paul it is a fashionable for some critics to say that the Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul are not in agreement. But these same critics are also often say that Peter and Paul aren't in agreement with Jesus. But here Peter affirms Paul's teaching in the warmest terms. He calls Paul beloved and he says that Paul writes with wisdom. We can see here that even though they have some uh, disagreement before, but Peter believed what Paul is, wrote is about the Word of God. It's about the, the Bible. And also, last for our uh, conclusion in Second Peter three seventeen and 18, ye, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, be were lest ye also being led away with error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. It says, We know... We who know of the day of the Lord and await it with patient expectation must persevere lest we fall from our own steadfastness. We must take care to keep abiding in the Lord. That's why we need to study the Word of God. We need to know the, uh, what the will of God based on the Bible, based on the truth. And we need to base our doctrine from the Word of God. With that, we can really... Uh, uh, detect who are the scoffers. We can know who is the one who is telling the truth, who is, not, who is telling lie from the Word of God. And, and the last encouragement, he says, but we need to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We prevent a fall from your, from your own steadfastness by continual growth in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is not merely the way God draws us to Him in the beginning. It is also the way we grow and stay in our steadfastness. We can never grow apart from the grace and knowledge of our Lord and we never grow out of grace of God's grace. We must also grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. This means knowing more about Jesus. The song, Lord, I want to know you more. But more importantly, knowing Jesus is a person in a personal relationship we need to have a personal relationship with the lord jesus christ because god is telling he, he really wants us to have a fellowship with him intimate fellowship personal fellowship so we need to check our uh, life if we uh, have a uh, really that fellowship with god then to him be glory both now and forever when we are this ready and this steadfast in the grace and knowledge of our lord it gives glory to god so when we do this the Lord will be glorified. So I hope this lesson are, uh, will uh, really warn us and encourage us 
about the the things that will happen in our time this is the the last days we are living in the last days uh, so we need to be to study more the word of god we really soak our self in the word of god and we need to always pray and uh, double our time serving the lord because we don't know when the lord will come but for sure he will come okay let's uh, all stand up and let's pray father in heaven lord thank you so much for this uh, uh message uh, this uh, lesson that uh, your promise is really true you are not slack concern uh, the lord, you are slack, not slack concerning your promise uh, you will uh, do it almighty god and we uh, we have faith that you will the that these things will happen and help us lord as we wait we'll uh, serve you do all 